What It Takes Radio Company presents. It's another edition of our flagship program called uh, Interesting Ideas. And our special series for this Holy Passion Week, On Going Down. And we finally come to uh, one of the big days, and that is Friday. That's right. Well, it's Friday, and many people call it Good Friday. I don't do that anymore. I have taken the familiar TGIF idea and changed it to TNGF. That's right, TNGF. Now, what do you think that's all about? Greetings, friends. This is Stan once again, and it is uh, Good Friday. And uh, I've got a number of stories about that, but uh, perhaps we can talk about uh, what is uh, going down on Good Friday. Yesterday was Thursday, and remember, I got a number of responses about that, that indeed, uh, maybe Maundy Thursday should be thought of as Bloody Thursday. Uh, the first blood was shed, and obviously there's going to be a lot of blood shed in uh, the, the days like Good Friday, like today. And so uh, that's appropriate. And also uh, Jesus made the point at the at the supper. Yeah, remember, my blood's going to be shed for you. And so the wine is a remembrance of that. And uh, my body's going to be broken for you. So every time you do that, when you participate, remember me. And I always love the idea that that's what Jesus is saying is, uh, remember me. And uh, then on this day, when uh, Jesus is hanging from the cross, the uh, penitent thief turns to him and says, you know, when, 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 you, when you get in your kingdom, remember me. And uh, so uh, this is a time when uh, on Friday, Perhaps the only thing good about it is the uh, admonition that we are remembered, that we uh, should remember what it's all about. Good Friday. Uh, first of all, in many parts of the world, this is a very, very solemn day. We lived uh, for a number of years in Latin America and uh, in that strong, uh, primarily Roman Catholic tradition and in the Latin tradition is a uh, Friday was a shut, it was actually a national holiday. It was celebrated as such. The businesses were closed and uh, uh, people would dress in, in, in black and dark and it, it was quite somber. Now that may have changed. That was a number of years ago, but at least that was the situation. And then when I was working in Europe with uh, international radio station, Transworld Radio, uh, down the road was the uh, big uh, Radio Netherlands station. And I was friends with some of the people down there. And one of the ladies uh, called me up and said, hey, Stan, got to do a program for uh, Good Friday. Uh, since you're kind of one of those religious guys, uh, can you come on the air? I know you're I know you're really good at broadcasting. Uh, you, you can handle it. Uh, uh, and uh, would you give a little presentation on why they call it good? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Why do they call Good Friday good? Um, and um I did come up with an answer. I'm not really sure or I remember what it was, and I'm not even sure I really believed it as such, but it was an explanation that I had found. Um, and I don't really think there's any good. In fact, I've kind of had some fun with this. Uh, we oftentimes use the expression TGIF, or thank goodness it's Friday, or maybe even thank God. It's Friday. And uh, I've come with this is uh, it is T G N F. There is no good in Friday. T G N F. There is no good in Friday. It's a terrible day. It's a terrible day. Uh, the one goodness might be that. Uh, as Jesus carried his cross to the crucifixion, that he fell. Huh. Can you just imagine those scenes? And if you're, remember, all of the people who are experiencing Good Friday don't know, as we know, the end of the story. 
They think this is really it. He dies and he's dead. And everything we've given our lives for in the last three years and family and friends and everything, it's gone. It's really bad. What do we do now? What do we do now? Well, let, let me just suggest, you know, that maybe, just maybe, uh, there are some things that are good, like Simeon, Simon, or... Uh, when Jesus fell, the Romans plucked somebody out of the crowd, and we think Ethiopian and, you know, probably dark-skinned or darker-skinned, and, okay, you, and uh, that he then uh, actually uh, carries the cross for Jesus. And there is some in the tradition that uh, he eventually became a real leader within the, uh, within the church and within the situation. I don't know. But there are three things that came out of this day that are very, very important. And so if you'll, if you'll just let me think about that with you. Okay, first of all, let's go to what has happened. Obviously, it's a political deal. What has happened is that Jesus is caught between the politics that are taking place between the Jews and the Romans. Uh, Herod takes him. He doesn't want to deal with this. And so he sends him to the Romans. The Romans send him, <laughs> send him back to Herod, and he sends him back. And it finally lands up, you know, poor Pilate has to, okay, become official now. <laughs> and he has to deal with the deal. Um, the Jews don't have, they believe, under Roman law, the right to execute. Well, the Romans sure do, that's for sure. And so they want it to be that deal. And there is that incredible trial. And um, I just simply want to point out that here might be some good. I sometimes mention to people that one of the most significant questions ever was asked by Pontius Pilate. You know, Jesus has said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, Pilate says, what is truth? What is truth? <laughs> that's not only a good question, that's a great question. And you know what? Every one of us eventually has to answer that question. What is truth? What is good? Yeah, that came out of Friday. Good question. And today we are reminded that we have to answer that. What is truth? Then Pilate made one of the most incredible statements. He finally puts him and he makes this statement. He uses the word behold. Behold the man. He didn't say behold a man. Wow. Behold the man. That's right. The man. The son of man. The son of God. This is the master of the universe. This is not a man. This is the man. I always smile when I think of Pilate doing that for you and for me. Yeah, he's the man, all right. And then we go uh, to the crucifixion and all that goes through that. And that is obviously celebrated in many, many ways and commemorated in many, many ways and talked about in many ways. We don't need to go into that, except that at the very end, it's reported particularly in Mark, who is kind of what I call the broadcaster. He really gets the details that after Jesus uh, died, uh, by the way, some have pointed out they didn't kill him. He gave up the spirit. They didn't kill him. He gave it up. After all, he's the man. Just let that idea sit on your head. Uh, that one Roman centurion said, Surely, this was the Son of God. Surely, this was a good man, an innocent man. A God man. Isn't it interesting that uh, three of those uh, incredible statements 
two statements and a question came from the Romans. This is a day that we commemorate and uh, we remember just how much. It's very simple. Jesus loves you. This I know. And I know it because of what he did on this day. Jesus loves me because he died for me. And he's uh, got a place for me. Thank you for giving me 10 minutes to talk about Good Friday. And I hope this might be encouraging or inspiring to you. And uh, maybe there is something good about what we learn on this Friday. Best and blessings to you. Um, may your celebration, your commemoration, give you a sense that God is very, very present to you on this holy season. Amen. Bye for now.